Hey everybody, today we're gonna work on Kale's head gasket. It blew for some reason. Probably hot rod, and I don't know. He doesn't do that, he's a good boy. So since we gotta replace the head gasket, take the manifold off to get the heads off, you know, why not just put some headers on it while we're there, right? Makes sense. So we're gonna do that today. It is Christmas Eve Eve. Note the hat. Um, so we're gonna try and get this done. We've got family to visit uh, tonight and tomorrow and Monday so we don't have a whole lot of time and we need to get this truck back on the road because he keeps driving mine and I'm tired of it so uh, we're gonna set you guys up and just kind of let you watch the process or whatever we're gonna start by taking the uh, exhaust out because um, he's got new uh, thrush or thrush welded he's going to put on there so he's just going to have a whole new exhaust system and instead of the two and one like the factory has we're going to just do two straight pipes <clears throat> or well pretty much straight pipes out the back so be a little throatier maybe give him an extra four horsepower or something or whatever it does so but all right we're going to get started tools everywhere. It's going to be awesome. Okay, we got tools there. It's awesome. Got to work it around a little bit, you know? Uh, is that? Oh, you're already going. Never mind. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I may have you hand me that here in a minute, but we'll see. I don't need it. All right, this thing. Let me just see what we're... Okay, so that's kind of... Did we ever change the oil in your truck? We did, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. You made me change it. Yeah, that's right. You changed it. Yeah, that's right. Over here... Damn. Um, hey, give me some some PB Blaster. I'll give it to you. Is it pretty rusty under there? Yeah, it's not too bad, but those always get rusty. I'll spray it, and then I'll tell you what we'll probably do is start taking all that off and let this soak, and then take, take this off. <clears throat> PB Blaster to the rescue. We'll let that soak for a little bit. And uh, we'll start taking the uh, intake and stuff like that off. to do because I don't like having to remember the firing order on the on this a particular vehicle which is obviously a small block Chevy on the firing order on it's like eight one four three six five seven two or something like that I can't remember exactly so what I like to do is just mark these and I'll mark them on the distributor so what I do obviously one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Or whatever. So I'll just mark those, those same numbers, and I'll just leave those attached to the cap. Like, I'm going to unplug these wires from the spark plugs, but on the distributor, I'll just leave those marked, or leave those on there and leave them marked. So I know that, you know, this is going to be the number one plug, or well, you know, whatever. So, and then, um, of course, then I'll just mark that number one, then. Whichever one's going there, number two, 
bloop, bloop, whatever. It's not the professional way to do it. It's just a way to do it. Okay? So, I'm going to work on that right now so I don't forget. All right, so we got everything off. Um, man, look at that. Look how crappy that oil is. This Whoever owned this before us must have just, you know, taken it to a Jiffy Lube or something like that where they just use cheap, like, barrel oil. I've heard Penn's Oil does this quite a bit. Um, but definitely, that's, that's just cheap oil. That is nasty. <clears throat> it's been the extra... Spend the extra money to uh, take care of your vehicles, guys. Anyway, um, as far as the uh, leak and the reason we took this off, you can see here that these three are black, the top of the pistons, right? And then this one over here, she's a little bit shinier than the rest. So I believe that's where my leak is. Something that's scaring me is I don't or did not see anything <clears throat> in the gasket that made me believe it was the gasket that failed. <clears throat> Sorry. Keep having to clear my throat. <laughs> but anyway, um, but I don't see any cracks in the block anywhere. And I don't see any cracks in the cylinder wall. So everything looks good there. But nothing makes sense as to why that would be like that. Unless there's just something really small about the head gasket that I missed, but which is possible. Oh, so this would be the head here. And this would be, if you guys can see. See the difference how these are have burned clean and these haven't burned at all clearly that's the one getting the water in it but the head looks good in that area so i don't know i don't know what to think it's kind of kind of worrisome a little bit <clears throat> see that the difference in color there. I don't know if I got that twisted around right.
So I don't know. Get it cleaned up, start putting it back together, and hopefully new gaskets solve our problem. All right, got the heads on. They are torqued down and ready for the intake. Uh, of course, got the head gaskets in there. You can kind of see they're a little bit of a copper color. Of course, those are just regular blue Felpro, but uh, we spray a little bit of the copper. I'll show you guys, in case you don't know. Copper spray gasket. So basically, it's just good for filler, you know, just, just a little something extra little extra security you know just in case but uh, later on probably tomorrow I'm gonna put the intake on start hooking all the stuff back up hope I can remember where all the <laughs> bolts go <laughs> anyway um, so far so good oh uh, I had lost a bolt down the distributor hole there so I thought, luckily, that's the guy I thought I'd lost. I've been stressing over that for a couple of days. But when I was over here putting the passenger side head on, I looked over here beneath those two fuel lines, and it was wedged down there by that little bracket. And uh, so that was very exciting because I looked and looked and stuck a magnet down there and couldn't find anything, couldn't see anything. And so I was excited to see that little guy hiding underneath the fuel lines. But anyways, that's going to do it for me for today. And tomorrow I will put on and clean up the uh, intake, put those gaskets on and all that. So um, I'm sure you guys noticed this is not what I call clean, but it is so much better than it was. There was um, up underneath the head just gunk and gunks of uh, hardened oil and just what it looked like down here in the tray but it was just packed up underneath there had to get like a scraper and a screwdriver and I mean just literally chisel out some of that nastiness so just make sure you use good oil just avoid all that I mean it may be a little bit more expensive up front but it'll save you money in the long run So we're trying to flush the radiator and all that stuff, getting ready to put new coolant in it. We got the heads on and uh, all that's back in there, the intake, all that. Lashed the valves last night, had Corey come over to make sure I didn't screw that part up. I'd seen uh, Corey and others do it a million times, but I'd never actually done it myself. So I actually did these last night. So far, so good. No bent rods or anything. <laughs> um, We've already ran water through it a little bit. And uh, so now we've got to heat up the hose because it is solid ice. We got Kel working on that, doing a great job. Wiki, wiki. Put headers on it, <clears throat> which you guys saw earlier. Um, this is about two weeks later. Um, the first part of the video was, I think, uh, two days before Christmas and just with Christmas and work and waiting on parts and just all that jazz it, it took a while to to get here I will say this heater hose well not really a heater hose I guess it's the hose coming off the heater core to the intake this little thing's two feet long maybe $54 54 dollars for that pile i could not believe it and it didn't even come with that plastic clip that snaps it into the neck here I had to buy that separate but gotta do what you gotta do put new plugs on it um that's about it other than gaskets um we didn't put anything new on there oh uh, no take that back sorry put a new uh, thermostat in. So new thermostat, headers, and plugs, and a hose. Oh, and this is a new hose also, forgot about that. So that's pretty much it. 
sounds really good we'll fire it up for you guys here in just a minute once we get this <laughs> once we get this thing melted off Steady as she goes. Let's see how well we do here. Oh, yeah. So far, so good. Easy does it. All right, Kel, go ahead and fire it up. I don't guess so. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Ooh, watch it bubble. Watch it bubble, baby. Pretty hot. It's not hot, but it's warm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah, it went way back down. It was like barely over a hundred. Hey guys. So, kind of gonna do another combustion test. That's how we found out that he had to. Uh, replace the head gaskets so we're gonna see if we fixed it if you guys have never done this it's real easy you can rent these from O'Reilly's but we do this often enough that I just went, went out and bought this from um, you know the greatest place on earth that's Harbor Freight in case you didn't know so all you do is you buy this liquid and you're just gonna fill it up to this line right here and then once it's in there you put this little tube right here and you just squeeze and it sucks up all the if there's any leaks it'll change color it'll go from blue to like either yellow or uh, I forget there's there's two colors it can turn turn to but And you got to make sure that there's room that you don't actually suck up any liquid in this. I think they say like three inches. And you just kind of do this for like a, I don't know, like a minute or so. This one's having trouble. There we go. There we go. That's what we want to see is all those bubbles. Oh, crap. I had trouble with this last time. It, it's like it got clogged. That little filter in there kind of got clogged. But as long as it's sucking air. No, that that's another thing. That metal part right there has got to be on top. Okay. 
I'm gonna have to go do what I did last time. Last time I had to blow air through there. There we go. There we go. But it's staying blue, so that's the good news. So I think we're good. I squeezed it several times. You can see it's still the same color as what I put in there. So I think we're good. He's back on the road tomorrow morning. We've got an appointment to get his uh, exhaust done, get his mufflers on, and uh, hopefully be all good in the hood. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Oh, putting the wrong thing in the wrong box. There we go. There we go. All right. Boop. Listen to that thing purr. Oh, yeah. Also, before we go, I want to show you guys this. I know I've already showed you where my garage is going. But today I did a little test fit. Just see how much room I'm going to have. So, pretty decent amount of room. And then, of course, this area where we're standing now is going to have a garage door right here where the trailer and all the tires are. So, I'll, of course, clean all that stuff up. But I'm going to be able to pull a car in, you know, this way. So actually, I think the Mazda, I'm going to just have it sitting here since it's so much shorter than any of the other cars I have. It'll be an easy fit. And then cars like this, like the Buick and uh, the Ventura or maybe even the wagon will be able to pull in here. And it's enough room to walk around if I need to do something simple. Um, but if I actually need to work, work on a car, pull a motor, drop a tranny, whatever, I probably end up moving one car out. But just basically need to get these cars under cover. I hate having them sit out here all the time. You get, you know, stuff like that and it just and it just looks horrible. But anywho, all right, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.